Hi, welcome back to Energy Shop Joe. Subscribe if you haven't. Please click like this video if you like it so it helps other people to find it. Tonight we're going to talk about the air compressor on the X15, but really uh, what I'm going to talk about holds true for any of the engines that Cummins makes. Uh, for a little while, Cummins made an air compressor for the B67 that I call the Morphodite, and that's because the crankshaft on the thing was about 14 inches long. And they did that because the when we had the rear gear train, the air compressor bolted to the gear housing on the back by the flywheel housing, but it had a come forward far enough that you could bolt the injection pump, which bolted right above the air compressor, on the rear gear train housing. You had to be able to completely remove that pump out, hopefully without removing the air compressor, which it turned out most of the time it was just easier to pull the air compressor. But the air compressor had to sit way back, almost midway on the engine, so that, that uh, there was clearance in there. So uh, other than that long crankshaft on that air compressor, the air compressors all work the same. If you work on these engines, you know how the air compressors work. There's an air governor, which is just an on-off valve. And when it sends air into, the, when the air governor senses that the air pressure is high enough in the air tanks, it sends air pressure to an air port on the compressor. And that port goes inside the compressor and pushes on what's called an unloader valve and it holds a, a plate up off of its seat so that when the air compressor piston goes up and down, instead of forcing air to the air tank, the air just goes up and comes right back down. So it's a, basically it's a, an exercise in futility when it's trying to pump air as long as the unloader valve is open. And then once the pressure drops in a tank enough, usually 30 pounds, from the pop-off point where it opens the unloader, the, the air governor will shift and dump the pressure going into the air compressor head and the uh, compressor will start to pump. Now I want to talk a little bit about the compressors on the X15 and really all the engines now. They used to be rebuildable. Uh, Cummins just came out and said the air compressor heads are now no longer going to be service serviceable in the field. Uh, rebuilding one of the unitized heads was kind of a pain. It was there was a lot of parts in it. You had to be careful how you did it. You had to clean it properly or it wouldn't pump right. So um, a lot of pieces in the kit. I'm personally glad they went to this newer head where you don't mess with it. The other big change is um, we all know for those those of us that troubleshoot and work with air systems on trucks if there was a blockage between the air compressor and the uh, air dryer or the air tank and we didn't have a line blowout, the air compressor could actually make so much pressure in that line that it would blow the head gasket out on the air compressor. And so what they did a few years ago is they put an, uh, an extra port in the head that connected to the air out port that would go to the air dryer or tank and they put a little a short little what looked like a pipe plug in there with a hole in it in the side of it and that was a high pressure valve that pumped off popped off at about I think it was 220 or 240 psi that would open and so if you had a blockage in the air system that would stop you from blowing out the head gasket and the reason Cummins did that is people would have a problem. They'd blow the head gasket out. Uh, if it was an older compressor, they'd buy a recon, put it on, start it up, and, in, and not very long, the recon compressor would blow a head gasket, and Cummins would get the compressor sent back under warranty, and you know the rest of the story. So they started putting that little uh, check valve in all the heads, and that took care of the problem. Well, for whatever reason, probably cost, they quit putting that in heads and now what they do 
is they have designed that high pressure unloader inside the head itself. So it'll dump back into the, into the inlet, if you will, if the pressure gets much over, I think it's 240 PSI. So that's one less part on the outside. They don't have to worry about customers taking that out and plugging it, trying to get their air pressure to build up because they think that thing failed and it's losing air there. Uh, they do a lot, of, a lot of changes for a lot of good reasons usually. So let's take a look at the air compressor. Again, it has a unitized head. Nine times out of ten, unless the engine has had so much dirt going through the intake, we call that dusted, that it's burning oil and has high crankcase pressure, uh, the air compressor doesn't need to cha be changed. Just replace the head if it doesn't want to pump air anymore or it becomes very inefficient. Um, the air compressor has a cylinder just like the engine. It has rings on a piston just like the engine. It has an oil control ring just like the engine piston. It doesn't have a liner though. Uh, the piston runs in the cast iron housing of the air compressor itself. So let's take a look at an air compressor on the engine. You probably all know where it's at, but we'll look at a couple things on it and then we'll be done with the air compressor. So here's the air compressor. And these two arrows point to two ports. There's one in each block where you can hook your air governor to. This is air out to the air dryer or an air tank. This is air in to the compressor. This hose tends to blow out right in the back here. So if you have a boost loss, you can't figure out where, take that hose off and see if it's split. I've seen that a number of times for low power, can't figure out where. These arrows are showing the coolant lines. The compressor head has an in and out line. On the right, the green arrow is showing where water goes into the block. Um, those hoses are held into the block by brackets. You can see them. Now we're looking at, you take this plate off and the power steering pump bolts in the back there. The air compressor head is this, the section between those two green arrows. Usually you gotta pull the intake to get that head off. Most of the time the heads got changed because they carboned up real bad because you get EGR going into the intake mixed with air compressor air. On the new engines, you'll see on the turbocharger compressor housing, there's a new fitting off of the housing engine towards the engine block. It goes to the front to a bracket on the front of the engine and then across through that bracket, I'm talking about air through the bracket, and then there's a pipe on the, on the uh, driver's side with the tube that comes back that goes over to a hose that goes into the air compressor. And they did that so that now the air compressor only gets clean, turbocharged, filtered air. So their soot problem in the air compressor is over. They tried everything to stop that problem. And they were unsuccessful, but now they finally figured it out. It took some extra plumbing, a housing change on the front of the engine. So when you see those extra pipes going up off of the turbo to the front of the engine, that's what they're for. Uh, they're for the uh, air compressor inlet air. And that is compressed air or boost. So whatever's in this air compressor hose is the same boost that's in your intake manifold. Really, it's the exact same thing. Uh, the air compressor crankshaft has a splined hole, so your power steering pumps will just bolt right up. No problem, you don't need any adapter, just a gasket, and you're good to go. Uh, the air compressors will run the, the life of the engine a million miles as long as you keep dirt out of the intake air, and the same goes, that same air goes into the engine. So if you dust your engine, you dusted your air compressor and you got to keep it cool, of course. And then uh, last, you want to make sure you change your oil when you should change it because there are bushings in there and the, um, the connecting rod on the crankshaft is just an aluminum rod. There's no bearing or bearing shells. The rod is a, a machined rod so that it is the bearing itself that bolts to the crank. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. See you next time.